Well, it is a step in direction, if, the right direction if they follow through. I mean, the reality, if you read between the lines here, they're talking about studying how they want to replace these various different penalties. Uh, but they haven't committed to do so. They haven't uh, proposed the legislation to make it happen. Uh, this is, in some ways, a, a Malaysian trial balloon. Uh, I mean, we hope that they'll follow through. But we've seen this before. Uh, we saw in a most more progressive government, the Pakatan Harapan government, which was in power uh, until 2018, that they also proposed to completely abolish the death penalty. Uh, then they dialed that back a little bit and said they were going to get rid of the mandatory death penalty, and then there was finally nothing. Uh, so, you know, with Malaysia, you really have to wait to see the actual proposals going into the parliament before you can say they're actually doing it. So how hopeful are you? What steps need to be taken to guarantee that the Malaysian government moves forward on this? Well, we want to see the actual legislative proposals. Uh, you know, we hope that they will move uh, with the kind of priority that they've discussed now with this with this announcement last week. But the reality is that uh, we have seen Malaysia drag its feet before. And so when we see actual proposals, when we see legislation going forward, it's quite clear the Malaysian government has the numbers in the parliament to pass anything they want. And I think that, you know, it's a very important reform to take forward. Roughly how many countries still permit the use of the death penalty? What's the global trend in abolishing it and reform, as you say? Well, it's been increasing uh, the number of uh, countries that have abolished the death penalty. There's probably uh, about 30 to 40 recalcitrant countries that are still out there that are really practicing the death penalty. You know, countries like the United States, Singapore, China, Vietnam. Uh, these are countries that are really quite abusive. Um, you know, I think Singapore gets a lot of attention in the region because, uh, you know, there have been a number of very high profile cases, including uh, the recent execution of uh, a man with uh, uh, mental disabilities. Uh, but really, if you look at uh, Southeast Asia, uh, Vietnam really leads the way. I mean, they, they executed uh, well over 400 people uh, between 2013 and 2016, and this was all happening in the black. It was happening in a place where nobody really heard anything about that uh, because, um, you know, they have hidden it uh, in a very opaque judicial system, and uh, no one was reporting on it. It only came out because there was ultimately a uh, report that uh, leaked out of the Vietnam government. So this trend that you're noting is going in the complete opposite direction that you'd like to see it. Why do you think that is? Well, I think that there's uh, a number of places uh, where there's still uh, popular support for the death penalty. Certainly that is the case in Singapore and, and, and if you look in parts of Malaysia as well. But I think that um, the reality is that <clears throat> People are starting to uh, understand uh, with international pressure uh, on a number of these governments that there can be changes. Um, I think Malaysia uh, is doing this in part because they want to be seen as improving their human rights record. They want to be seen as a rights respecting country. And uh, doing away with the mandatory death penalty uh, is really a first step to do that. Do you think it will encourage other countries in this region to take similar steps? Well, we hope so. Uh, we think that actually this is when you have uh, a peer country that does that, uh, you can argue uh, more succinctly that, hey, if Malaysia does it, why why can't you do it? Uh, but, you know, we're seeing in other places like in Myanmar, uh, where there's now been uh, sentences uh, for death penalty uh, of, against over 100 people uh, since the military coup took place uh, last year. Uh, and now an announcement that there are going to be four political prisoners that will be executed. Uh, that is going in the wrong direction. And, and Myanmar has had a moratorium on the death penalty, a, a de facto uh, a set of circumstances where they've not been implementing it uh, since 1990. So, uh, you know, these moratoriums, they're important, but they're not the be all and end all because ultimately uh, they can be very easily undone in a, in a top uh, priority case that the government decides they're going to uh, use the death penalty on. Because, of course, Malaysia has had a moratorium on the death penalty since 2018. What impact has that had on those who are uh, still on death row? Well, I think that the moratorium is certainly something that uh, the people in death row uh, feel is, uh, you know, critically important for their, for, their, their, for their future. But the reality is that, uh, you know, 
Malaysia had a death, a death penalty moratorium for many years before 2018, and then there was all of a sudden a surprise number of executions. So, you know, I think that, you know, when we're looking at moratoriums, uh, they're all well and good, but they are not the step that needs to be taken. There needs to be a real step in legislation to do away with the death penalty. Uh, and this is the sort of thing Australia should be advocating for. Australia is a, is a leading country that has been uh, campaigning against the death penalty uh, across the globe. Uh, this is where Australian leadership really needs to be seen. So you feel that other countries should be putting more pressure on countries like Malaysia to do more? Absolutely. I think that countries that uh, have abolished the death penalty uh, should be working very hard to persuade other governments that are still practicing the death penalty to end it. So that means, you know, taking on Vietnam, taking on Singapore, taking on Myanmar, taking on Malaysia. These are the kind of governments that need to feel a concerted international pressure, uh, you know, bilaterally as well as in multilateral forums like the UN uh, to abolish the death penalty. It's not going to come because a government decides that, you know, they wake up in the morning and they say we, we're doing the wrong thing all the way. It's going to become because of international pressure and a desire of a country like Malaysia to be seen as more rights respecting. And as you mentioned, Malaysia is considering other forms of punishment for the offences that carry the mandatory death penalty. What would be your recommendations here? Well, I mean, you know, I mean, there's a there's a number of very heinous crimes that are that are, you know, being talked about here, you know, death by torture and things like that. So obviously there there is a, a need for a very long prison sentences in cases where you have such uh, horrific crimes take place. We just disagree with a, a government, uh, you know, exercising the cruel, unusual punishment of putting someone to death. Uh, you know, it is just not the right way to proceed. It is a it is always possible that something could go wrong with a trial or with an investigation. Uh, there's been a number of cases, for instance, in the United States where people were sentenced to death and it later turns out that they didn't do it and they're exonerated through uh, new evidence or through DNA evidence. So, you know, when you talk about a, uh, a final punishment uh, like the death penalty, it really should not be imposed. Uh, and that is, I think, the really critical message here that uh, Malaysia, uh, as a first step, uh, may be willing to walk away from the mandatory death penalty. Uh, we would applaud that if they actually do that. But then the next thing is that they should abolish the death penalty altogether. Phil Robertson, thank you. Thank you.